This is BBC One. Now at 12.30, Grandstand. Very difficult to replace Tony. He's a good player for us, but unfortunately, because of his domestic reasons, we had no other job to do but to let him go. And it was our compassionate grounds, really. like Coronation Street and Crossroads and BBC just as rubbish. Yeah, all of what they TV, I never missed it and I do miss it now.
greeting on our first visit of the season to Elland Road. Brian Greenoff, who's come back this side of the Pennines some ten years after Don Revy tried so hard to sign him as a schoolboy from his hometown in Barnsley. Warrington in the striped shirt. was just a few hundred yards from the main entrance to Elland Road when, according to one of the 70 fans aboard, the top deck was suddenly engulfed in flame and smoke. Policemen from a control van nearby broke many of the vehicle's windows with their truncheons. Then some of the fans jumped from the top deck and others shinned down lampposts to no entry signs. One of the policemen sustained cuts. The police say they believe the fire was started deliberately on a back seat.
35th minute, a quite superb solo effort in which Mariner used speed and strength before finding the bottom corner of the Leeds net. So it was 1-0 to Ipswich at half-time, but four minutes into the second half the scores were level. Leeds worked a nice move which ended with Alan Curtis's cross being met by Ray Hankin and knocked into the path of Trevor Cherry. But the question Ipswich were asking is did Cherry handle before scoring? Anyway, one all it was, and there was no question that Paul Mariner definitely handled shortly afterwards, when he again had a goal disallowed. Ironically, it was yet another handball, this time by Ipswich defender Alan Hunter, which settled the issue. Because from the resulting penalty kick, Kevin Hurd scored to give a final scoreline of Leeds United 2, Ipswich Town 1. defeat for Leeds led to a demonstration by about 250 fans chanting Adamson out. But Leeds manager Jimmy Adamson said they're entitled to shout, but it affects the team more than me. Tatia Cryova, two, Leeds United, nil. down to the south coast to see Southampton against Leeds. Number four, Jeff Chandler playing in the attack is Leeds' recent signing from Blackpool and it's his first full game in the first division. Charlie George, what a glorious ball that was to Hebbard. Good cross to Boyer! Oh, it's a fine ball to Edwards 
when Geno has come, and Ed Bissell has scored for Leeds. Chandler saw the opening, created the space with the pass to Entwistle. Geno came off his line, and in doing so, I think, made up Entwistle's mind for him. But the noise being made inside the Dell at the moment is being made by the travelling Leeds supporters. Here's Gray. Oh, through the legs of Williams, and he's got brought down by Peach. And it's still a joy to watch this fellow play, Eddie Gray. And there's still nobody who can dribble quite like him, in my opinion. It's an old-fashioned art, but when Gray plays, it's on view. And he finds Curtis. Good run by Alan Curtis. Look at that, he sent them always. What a good try. That's an absolutely brilliant goal. That is absolutely outstanding from Curtis. And Leeds are in front. He turned them inside out by himself, and against the run of play, it's all smiles in the Leeds camp. What a good result for Leeds. Dave Merrington walks away at the end of what was a turbulent week for this club. The directors gave the manager a vote of confidence when the fans wanted him out, and it's Leeds' first away win of the season. Boys. How do you feel personally about demonstrations of the type that happened here on Saturday? Does it worry you? I don't like it, but I've been through it all before. I've been through it at Burnley, I've been through it at Sunderland, going through it a bit here now at Leeds. So it's like water for ducks bat in a lot of cases. I don't like it, but I'm hardened to it. Less than 15,000 bothered to turn up, and what they saw must have made them wish that they'd stayed at home too. Leeds should have gone ahead after less than a minute, but Paul Hart's header was way off target and the pattern for the night was set. Arthur Graham gave the Romanian defence a few headaches, but by the time the ball got near the goal, the Leeds forwards were showing little imagination. Cryova were even threatening with the odd breakaway. Lucic here keeping the home side in the game. There isn't a lot of luck around at Ellen Road these days, unless you count bad luck. Cryova's first goal had plenty of that. Byram Stevenson's half-hearted attempt at clearing the ball had sent his keeper the wrong way, and by now the tie was lost and the Romanian celebrations had started. Soon afterwards, Arthur Graham's shot was the best effort for Leeds of the night, but even that wasn't good enough. There was one spark of inspiration, though, which warmed the crowd. It came at the other end. Beldanu was the scorer, the man who missed a penalty in the first leg. It got the only round of applause of the evening, and it prompted the first sign of protest. I think it's a disaster for us, but then you've got to get over disasters, haven't you? What about your own position, Jimmy? There's been a lot of speculation, obviously, about that. Does tonight's result worsen that position? Uh, it'll not make it any better, but as far as I'm concerned, I've got a job to do here at Leeds. The Leeds directors have not interfered at all, and uh, if they don't interfere with my job, and I get on with it, and I'm a failure, then I expect to be kicked out the door. Now tonight's headlines. Leeds manager Jimmy Adamson faces yet another demonstration by angry fans calling for his resignation as his club go out of the UEFA Cup. Leeds chairman Manny Cousins says we are not happy with the present situation and Mr Adamson will be asked for his policy for the future. Boys don't cry.
So the feeling is very, very strong then? I think most supporters want to see the manager go and get a new manager appointed as quickly as possible. But wasn't it proved in the past that it's not that easy to get somebody else to Leeds United? Unfortunately, uh, no one seems to want to come here now. has been money available. Will you be encouraging Mr Adamson to spend a bit more of that money now? If he comes up with any player that he would like, he will, he will get the support, first the support and the support of the board. of Leeds returns to Old Trafford where he spent 11 years before his transfer in August. 17-year-old Terry Connor keeps his place in attack, a big occasion for him. Nickel, Manchester United retaining possession, looking for an opening, fouled by Hart on Jordan, and there was no doubt there at all that Joe Jordan was on the receiving end. Hart gets the yellow card, 
There's Arthur Graham. Always seems to perform very handily away from home. Out to Hurd on the far side. Still Hurd. All the way back, and there's Connor. And the young lad has scored again. The 17-year-old has put it in for his second goal since coming into the side. And it was made possible by Kevin Hurd in the first place, who squirmed his way. Well, Arthur Graham gave him the ball. Then he squirmed his way past two Manchester United players. Surely the defence should have had it away, but they didn't. And when it came right across, it evaded Moran, and it was Connor who put it in. Thomas. Appeals and a penalty. Trevor Cherry on Steve Koppel. Oh, a save by Lukic. Well done, the goalkeeper will be 19 years old on Tuesday, and he celebrates early by making a penalty save at Old Trafford. Ashley Grimes took the kick, but Lukic read it right. The ball not far enough away from the keeper, but all credit to him for the way he got down to block it. Concerted pressure by Manchester United. Nickel. Jordan is up there. Can Thomas turn it in? He can, and he has. Nicky Thomas, the scorer. And Leeds become only the second side this season to take a league point away from Old Trafford from Manchester United in a 1-1 draw. Do you think sometimes they're out to teach you a bit of a lesson as a, as a newcomer? Oh, I suppose so, but I'm out to teach them a lesson that I'm just as good as them. Both you and Terry are sort of being talked about as the new Leeds United heroes these oh. days. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, all we've got to do is uh, do our best, and providing we do our best, I think we'll, we'll do all right.
a guy out there who's a contact man for us and he's seen him play and, uh, and that we should have a look at him. And, uh, it's been done by other clubs and been successful such as Spurs, other clubs it's been a failure so it's a bit of a hit and miss thing whether they'll settle down or not even if they're good enough. The football in English is more to get and to run, we are more to play the ball and play it. Hey, boy, my love, call of the Grey Brothers on opposite sides. Bowles. Bertels. Free kick just outside the area, about three yards outside. It's great. Oh, it's in. Frank Gray against his old club in the first minute. Johnson leads to draw level, but Boyer got blocked in. Ah, Hampson. Oh, and that's taken away by Francis. He's only got Maidley, the goalkeeper, to beat. Leads it pushed right forward, and there's Bertels linking. Bertels versus Lukic, he's wide, but it's in. 2-0 to Nottingham Forest, with the Leeds defence stretched out of sight. Some short of the near post. Bertels is waiting there, Larry Lloyd's on the goal line. But in that one, it's right in the centre of the goal mouth. And Lukic got to it. Boyer, 3-0. Good run by Edmissel, Hampson. Connor causing trouble in the goal mouth. And it's in, 3-1. And it looks like an own goal 
to Larry Lloyd. Lloyd, I think, got the final touch. Forrest have conceded a soft goal there. Our bowls. Oh, that pass just wasn't good enough. Real chance then for Forrest to have spare players. Now Francis ricochet to Robinson. There could be something on here. He tried to lob the goalkeeper and he did. A superb goal by Robertson. A piece of sheer skill. The problems really are for Jimmy Adams to solve.
Why wouldn't I go on yeah. Saturday? Well, uh, not until they get a team worth watching. I've lost interest in it now. It's uh, it's just very dull and tedious whenever you go. He'll see us through, will Adamson. I reckon he know it personally. It will be no. it will. All, all fans will. don't like Sport him. second rate players, so they've got a second rate team now. What about the board of directors? Well, say no more about them. Say no more about them. Sorry. <laughs> The current disillusionment with Leeds United was all too plain on Saturday. Those who did go saw a disappointing match. If Leeds have been clinging to a faint hope of qualifying for Europe, their form against Coventry should by now have dispelled such thoughts. Coventry came the nearest to getting a goal, with a header that glanced the bar. Leeds, on the other hand, never looked like scoring. It ended as a goalless draw, and after the final whistle, the crowd booed and called for the removal of the Leeds manager, Jimmy Adamson. At Leeds, five players booked, a linesman hit by a missile from the crowd, and the Middlesbrough captain, Tony McAndrew, sent off. Leeds won the actual game. Pearson, Devonshire, he's in the gap! Can he put it in again? Oh, that's a brilliant goal! That is a marvellous goal! Blanchford, Berardi, Lampard who got it away, but up comes Wright, seven minutes left. 
Plenty of Everton players forward. Oh, that's done in superbly by Lechman. Looking. Cross. And oh, it's gone in by Lampard. Frank Lampard has scored for West Ham. And that is it. West Ham are through to Wembley again. John Lyle turns quietly away as it is wont as the players go for their supporters. United make three changes on the team beaten at uh, Wolves last week. Jimmy beating Brian there, I'd rather screen off. Could be a bit awkward in the wind. Parlane, Flynn. Harris, Graham far post, and turned in by Parlane. Waited his moment, did Carl Harris before playing it back to Derek Parlane, who put it in very cleanly for his third goal since signing for Leeds United. 14 minutes gone. And Leeds United take the lead as they did in the match at Old Trafford. McQueen. On my great off to Jordan. Well, he had to hit it first time because his angle was running out. Lukic was poised. again on the 18-yard line. Here's Thomas. And Jimmy Greenoff, and again the goalkeeper very quickly off his line. It ran loose for a second. Free kick given against Jordan, but it did run loose for a second. Nice bit of refereeing there. 15 minutes left for Leeds United to recall their first victory over Manchester United here since season 71-72 when they scored five. There's Harris. Field for handball, and handball has been given. Penalty it is. Referee had no doubts about it. McQueen protested. But the referee immediately reacted. The crowd shouted immediately too. And so Kevin Hurd with the opportunity to put Leeds United two up and Manchester United out of contention for the championship, whatever is happening at Anfield. Well, his opposite number, Lukic, saved the penalty in the fixture at Old Trafford. But Bailey can't match that. And Leeds United take a 2-0 lead in the 76th minute. Applause from the Leeds supporters. Kevin Hurd's eighth goal of the season. In the end, it proved to be but a sideshow to the main event. But a thoroughly entertaining sideshow for all that, which has been enjoyed particularly by the Leeds supporters 
up in a crowd of a little under 40,000. A good end to a disappointing season for the home team and a disappointing end to a very good season for the away team.